Overdrive continues. Brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Brian Hayes, the O'Dog, Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan, our buddy Mike Johnson coming up here in a moment. Something to chew on. Brought to you by Boston Pizza coming up in a moment. We're down to four teams in the NHL, four teams in the NBA. Jay's in action tonight. And uh, CFL right around the corner. You've got... Only two major championships left in golf. You got a lot going on right now. A lot yeah. going on. Some good couching. Some good. Very I mean, good couching. Great weekend, man. Long weekend. Beautiful weather up here. Like we were talking about hot, it on Thursday. Man. Exactly how there have been, you know, May 2 fours of the past, Victoria Day weekends of the past where it's snowing, yeah. you know, or feels like it's <clears> eight, nine, 10 degrees and wet. This was like mid July weather all weekend. It was amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I've, I feel at some point I've got to respond to some of the things that were said on Thursday and Friday on the yes. show. Okay, okay, quickly, two things. Because you would have been disappointed in me. I, I, it was such an ignorant question I watched to ask. It. I watched the clip. I watched the so, clip to Strutty. That was so funny. So I thought stupid. it was awesome. So <laughs> stupid to wonder if May 2-4 is the rest of the country. Of course it is. <laughs> it was um, awesome. You should have seen in the same show, Noodles, he asked for a Brad Marchand clip. <laughs> From JP, and he played the wrong one. Oh, yeah. oh no. Oh. <laughs> I think I handled it pretty well. Was there a head shake, or was it, what was it? I, no, he was I, like, oh, that's not the right one, JP. And <laughs> like then, twitching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was in here, too, so I could look over and be like, JP, yeah. what the hell are you doing yeah. right now? Oh, but no. But the bigger <laughs> conversation that came out of Thursday was you in Vegas on a date night last bowling. night with the boys, boy, bowling with some woman you were never going to see again. It, it, Explain it, yourself, Noodles. Okay, yeah. so my phone starts lighting up, and I'm getting it from everybody. Like, Strutty <laughs> is, like, yeah. Strutty There's is also the Batman movie in Spain yes. that we got to get to. Okay, well, that one that is too. different. That's my wife chiming in. So, but I, right away... Gurdeep sends me a note and says, Strutty is just woodshedding you right now. And I'm like, oh, my God, like, what is going on? And then I'm getting, you know, tweets and everything. I I have to defend myself because the, the story is somewhat true, but Strutty adds, he embellishes it. That's okay. the problem. He embellishes okay. oh, he the story. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't He embellished the story because we had a great weekend. We met some people. And the, the, this particular girl and her friends, the next day, we were just hanging by the pool. And she's like, would you like to go for a drink that afternoon because they were flying out? I said, yes, I'll meet up with you. And then I can meet up with my buddies to go out that night because they're just laying by the pool drinking. So I went and met. And it wasn't at a bowling alley. I don't know how all of a sudden it was bowling. I think Strutty embellished that. It was okay. at a, a restaurant called Gordon Biersch, which is like a... You know, it's a pub. So I went and met for a few drinks and went back and met the guys. And <laughs> listen, it was, you know, it was a partial date or whatever. I but see. Strutty turned it into this, like, yeah. ridiculous. The way I, Strutty I told the story the is, is that perfect, you blew though. the guys off to go yeah. on a bowling date. And it was like, that is the, ridiculous. The girls were yeah. from, like, Savannah, Georgia. Very nice group. And, and, you know, the one girl I was chatting up, whatever, was single. And we were. It was a good time. Yeah. So I went and had it, a drink with the group and hung out with them that afternoon. And, you know, Strutty was tells the story of how I went bowling. And, <laughs> and then you guys are talking about uh, Goodwill hunting where I slide the ticket yeah. across the table. Got to go see about a girl. That wasn't the case. It was just. <laughs> and of course, I'm not here to defend myself. So I'm just getting chewed on. Oh, yeah. And then people are. And then Steph calls me and goes, oh, that story. Do you remember when you took me to Batman in Spain? I'm like, yes, we saw a movie in Spain. And what's Which wrong is with that? That's crazy, Noodles. Yeah, like, Spain is, is one of the most beautiful places in the world. You're there for a short period of time. You can see the movie anytime <laughs> when you're home and it's raining. You're in Spain, dude. Yeah. And, like, you do not go to the movies in Spain. Like, you just, you can't if you're a Why? tourist. I, I don't mind doing movie theaters in other countries. What's wrong with that? I think you it's absurd. have a beer and watch a movie. We watched... Batman yeah. was released great that movie. weekend. It was a great movie. We watched it in a in Was a it in English in or was it in Espanol? You, and no, it was... you can do it. It was English with 
you know, Spanish subtitles, whatever it okay. was. So, but we doable. watched the English version. It was two hours of our life on a, on a vacation. <laughs> it's What's in wrong with Spain, that? Spain, though. Like you had to choose something. You're like, okay, we're not going to have time to do that. Yeah. But we're canceling that because we got to see Batman. Got to see it. Well, it was um, a good movie at that. Oh, point. it is a brilliant movie. I'm not disputing that it's a great movie, <laughs> but it's it's the Spain part that yes. I just I can't jive with. And like Johnny's yeah. over there now. To be fair, they're at the World Championships for a long time, and it's a work trip. They're right. there to work. Maybe it is a good idea. If you have an off day, go catch a movie. But I doubt it. I would yeah. guess Mike Johnson and others, if they have a day off over there, they're sightseeing. They have they you know go to a museum, find like a really well, cool part of town. Let's ask him. Maybe, yeah. maybe I'm wrong on this. Here's our TSN hockey analyst, Mike Johnson. Johnny, any movie seeing over there while you're in, in Prague or throughout Europe? Yeah, does Gord ever phone you and say you want to hit up a flick tonight, pal? <laughs> you couldn't get me to go to a movie in Toronto. Forget right. about going to one in, in Europe. I'm in Prague. I'm going to go find some church. I'm going to go find an old town. Yeah. I'm going to find something with a story behind it. Absolutely now, if you're a movie buff, I guess, and yeah, we are here for like three weeks, so like you could sneak in a movie, but no, movies are for like rainy days in your basement. Yeah, exactly. Don't go to movies anymore. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. Like the running <laughs> of the bulls could have been happening and Noodles is in there <laughs> watching Batman. Well, <laughs> like it's, it's just not crazy. like we also went to a bullfight too. So it wasn't like, right. you know, we did everything we could took a cooking class, did all of these things all over right. there, but we, we did go see the Batman, and it was a good movie. And But Steph was, you know, obviously had to point out some of my deficiencies because Strutty threw me under the bus last week with a fake news story. So I'm, I'm now defending myself here on a Tuesday after mm -hmm. five days. I've been stewing sitting here yeah. because I've just been woodshedded all weekend. <laughs> and... <laughs> Terrible. That is terrible. tough. That is tough for you to take a beating on your own show. Whenever anyone is away, you just get torched. Like yes. you basically are setting yourself up for trouble. Yes. Um, but anyway, you know, you're you're over there at the Worlds. Canada's doing well. Like everything. Now we're into the, I guess, the real stuff, right? They got Slovakia coming up. How are we feeling about their chances of following through here and, and maybe winning this thing? Well, you, they are playing well. They went undefeated, a um, couple overtime games, but did not lose a game in the seven-game preliminary round. They got better, as they always do. Noodles was very, you know, when they, when they struggled against Austria, Noodles was the voice of reason. Like, you know what? They, 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 they worked their way into this tournament as far as the focus and, the, and yeah. sort of the energy they put in the games, and they have. They've been way better. Their last three games, they played, what, Finland, Switzerland, and Czechia, all really good teams, and they beat them all. Three and four nights were really good. Dylan Cousins, guys, scored a goal in six straight. He's got eight goals to lead the tournament. The, the guy is a beast over here. Two tournaments in a row. Last time he was over here, he had seven goals in, in the tournament. Now he's got eight and on and going. He scored an overtime, shorthanded game winner today to silence the Czech crowd. Um, they look good. And they have Slovakia in the, in the quarterfinals, which is really the game you have to win, right? Like, you come over here for two and a half, three weeks, and if you lose the quarterfinals, the whole – trip seems pointless because you don't even get to play for a medal like if you win the quarterfinal you got to play for a medal play to the last day so they're in a good spot they've come first Slovakia comes fourth they should be the favorite in that one now once they get past that Sweden appears to be the best team Sweden guys has basically their Olympic defense Hedman Eric Carlson Rasmus Dahlin is on their third pair Jonas Brodeen like they are loaded and they have not lost a game. They've won all seven in regulation. So they'll be tough to beat, but Canada should be there on the final weekend going for it. Johnny, you talked about Dylan Cousins. He's lucky that he didn't blow his knee out on that Fiala hit. I mean, that's the... Seriously. The, I, I, that was, I mean, I was watching that. I, I think it was live, but I, I was watching it, and then obviously they score a couple power play goals off of that. But that is the biggest concern I always have with guys going over there. Eric playing Stahl. hard and and yeah, ask Eric Stahl. That was uh, I can't remember who who was the guy that hit him. Eric Stahl. Edler. But, yeah, Alex Al Alex Edler. Edler. Good memory, oh yeah. Yeah, but I but that's the thing. Like that was, I, I, you know, Cousins tried to avoid contact, but Fiala, that's a knee on knee, and rightfully so, he gets a major and kicked out of the game. But you know, if he if he injures himself right there, that's a long rehab over the summer. But instead, he ends up scoring a beautiful goal on on the power play. And you mentioned shorthanded today. Cousins is a really nice player, but 
you know, those injuries always concern me or potential ones. Yeah, you're right. And that was like a that was a pretty nasty hit, that knee on knee. Like that could yeah, have been was. much worse. Uh, Cousins was no worse for where he missed one shift and went back to it. But part of the, the way that they officiate and the way that they do supplementary discipline over here, Noodles, is taking that in into consideration. Like they the, this tournament wants players to feel like they will be protected from you know, stuff that shouldn't happen. So I was actually quite surprised that Kevin Fiala played today. He scored two goals in the game when they won, but like they, they tend to come down pretty hard on guys when they, when they cross the line because they want teams and players to feel comfortable saying, send your guys over there. It's not going to be anything crazy. Then, you know, never going to be perfectly safe, but we're going to do everything in our power to make it uh, so that they don't have anything like that happen. So that, yeah, that would be a, the great fear. Alex Lyon, was the goalie for the, for the Americans. He got hurt mid-game and went right back to North America. I don't even know what's wrong with him. He just disappeared. He's like, whatever was was significant, significant enough that he left the team and the country. So, um, yeah, there's always that risk. But I think the rewards of, one, playing for your country, which you do feel you know, a real pride in doing, you get coached by different coaches and around other players, which I think you can grow and learn from just from interacting and watching and experiencing other stuff and then playing in games that matter in games to win something. I think there's always something really beneficial, no matter where you are in your career to put yourself in those high stress situations and learn what happens. So I think there's lots of positives that outweigh the negative, but there is always that fear. Something to chew on brought to you by Boston Pizza, Canada's favorite sports bar. From tip-offs to tie bites and puck drops to pizza, BP's elite lineup of apps, wings, and ice cold beers always dialed in for game time. Hustle in your local BP tonight. We've been asking online, Johnny, and we'll ask you. Conference finals are now set. Four teams left. New York Rangers, Florida Panthers, Edmonton Oilers, Dallas Stars. Who are you most confident will reach the cup final? Of the four teams, who would you put money on is that's the team I'm riding. That's the one I think will get through the next round and be seen in the cup final. That's a, that's not a terrible question. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's Florida, Florida. They're going, yeah. They're going up against the president's trophy winners, but I think Florida, the way they're playing, the way they're built, the experience from last year, I think the fact that they don't take penalties, they will wear New York out five on five. And they got a goalie who's a Vezina finalist. But Shosturkin, who is generally the best goalie in the series, shouldn't be as big an advantage as it usually is and certainly was against Carolina for the New York Rangers. I just, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think Florida, I think the Dallas Edmonton series is, a, is quite a toss up, very close. So I would say Florida. And mm. I don't feel great about that pick. I just feel the best of them all. Right. Yeah, you got to pick one. I, I'd probably say Dallas, but I, I, I have a tough time. Like defining any of them, I I think the Rangers. Jesus might be a like McJesus might go McJesus. He might, he, but he hasn't yet. He hasn't. That's what I'm saying. Like he's been good. He's been very and on the power play they've been incredible. Points. Yeah. I know, I know they've been incredible. I mean he started play, right? with five. He had five points in the first game, but not yeah, that, again. That not to take anything away from him. The guy's the best player in the world. Dry settles a beast. I just the Skinner stuff still scares me. I'm sorry. It, I know what happened exactly. in Game Six and Seven, but that still scares me. And Dallas, to me, look look who they've gone through, like Vegas and Colorado. Like that's battle tested, and they're at home. I think Hayes, if you ask that waiting. question, could any team get to the conference final going through Vegas and Colorado? You'd say not a chance in hell. It'd be tough. It'd be right. tough. And and then Edmonton. It's not going to get easier. Edmonton and Florida. Like, what a run that's going to be if Dallas can get through it all. Yeah, um, yeah it's, I mean, the four teams remaining are all great teams. And they all they all are good worthy story teams. Too. Yes. Good, like, you know, kind of like storylines you want to buy into, haven't won in a while. What I want to watch, though, is out west is we've seen Chris Tanev and Essa Lindell do a number on Jack Eichel and then Nate McKinnon at five on five, which is almost impossible to do. And now maybe the greatest test of, of Chris Tanev and his defensive stop of your ability is now McDavid and Dreisaitl, especially at five on five. If he can somehow corral them after what he did to Eichel, who never scored a goal with Tanev on the ice at five on five, to McKinnon, who only scored one in that series with Tanev on the ice at five on five, if he can do that again, 
That will go down as one of the greatest trade deadline pickups you can remember. He might not score a goal the whole playoff, and it will still be one of the greatest trade deadline acquisitions of recent memory, given what he's done to that team. Yeah. Johnny, we can circle back on the on the final four teams, but I wanted to get your thoughts on Barubi being hired today. And we had CJ on, and the idea of roster construction came up. If roster construction was came across your desk, what would be the first thing you tackled with it? For the with the current piece? Leafs lineup as is. Yes, like it's just there's got to be some yeah. there's going to be some changes here. There's some money coming off the books. There's some. Yeah. Money to be spent. It's roster construction. They have to construct a roster for next season that's different, and they got to go about it a different way. What would be the first thing on the pecking order for you if it, if it was on your watch? Defense. I'd go for two good defensemen. Now the challenge, though, is like who and how. It's easy to mm-hmm. say I need defensemen. Everyone does. But like Brandon Montour's out there. I like Matt Roy's out there. Like there are some UFA guys. That should be in that sort of three, not Monster will get seven or eight million dollars, but Roy could be in like a three or four million dollar contract. That's where I go. I spend the money there. I don't spend too much on offense right now. Um, I go for a veteran, cheap, relatively cheap backup goalie and play him with Wall, and I'll have, you know, two and a half million dollars, you know, in, in net. And, and then we'll see what else frees up. I don't know if I have another 10 million on. You know, because Marner's come off the books or something like that, then then that would change. But I think, you know, you take the money. They need defense when they have right now what Riley signed, McCabe signed, um, Benoit signed. They don't have a lot of guys there. I guess Lilligren could be re-signed. But I would look to get a significant upgrade on the right side. Defense would be priority number one. Johnny, has your philosophy changed? Because we were talking about last hour on goaltending and outside of Stuart Skinner, you take a look at the other three teams all pretty much have a rock star in net. And I know everyone talked about Vegas. Ah, oh, you can do it by committee, all of that type of stuff. But this playoff, if, if it hasn't shined a light on the importance of goaltending, you know, nothing really has because, you know, you look at what Edmonton had to do and, you know, good on Stuart Skinner. You know, there was some adversity there, and his last two games he was really rock solid, and the team played great in front of him. But, you know, O thought goaltending would be a number one priority. I believe that D should be. Uh, but the, the the question is, Joseph Wall, you can't trust. That's the – I think he's mm-hmm. going to be a player, but he just – he's had injury issues his whole career. So, you know, when you say uh, sign a veteran guy, backup guy, now all of a sudden – you can get through the regular season, but now what are you going to do in the playoffs where it's going to have to be by committee potentially? Yeah, I guess my challenge, Noodles, is, you know, how many of those goalies like an Ottinger, like a Shostakovich, or, or Bobrovsky are around. Like, there's just not – they're not around. So, I don't know if you're going to try to trade for UC Saros or whatever, you know, those crazy rumors that might be out there. I right. suppose, but, you know, I, I still think – I, you know, if Joseph Walker stay healthy, which is a big if because he hasn't, like I think he's close enough to being really good that, you know, they can allocate $8 million elsewhere and not in net and be a net better team. You know, like they had Vancouver was in the second round. They're playing Archer Seelops, yeah. right? Like they're, they, and they were in game seven. So, like, you know, it, it ebbs and flows. I, I won't overreact to every individual year. Like some year the big name goalies will get there in Vasilevsky, and some years it'll be Aiden Hill. But I still think the way the Leafs are built, Right now, especially in their cap crunch situation, unless they shed one of the big salaries, which I don't know if they'll be able to do. Um, right. I, I think it is in to put the roster together as is right now. You can't afford one of those big guys, let alone where are you going to find one? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the trade market is most likely. You know, ideally, this is why Wall, if he could stay healthy and give you a reason to believe he's going to turn into a number one. It just makes your life so much easier. Mm-hmm. And I, I could see a scenario where they just force themselves into that. But he's just, he's had so many injury problems throughout his career mm-hmm. that it just, it, it, ha- it, if it fails, it's on you, right? Like if, if, if he gets hurt and you got to put someone in the net in the playoffs that you, you don't love and he plays poorly, that's on the GM. Like that's on management because what they decided to do was just, just, Close their eyes and pray it was going to work out. 
That's what they did this year. That's, Samsonov was on waivers. Like yeah, they, you yeah. Know, like, but with Wall, like what the, when he plays, he looks like a really good goalie. Like he looks mm-hmm. like a guy that has the makings of being someone you 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 want in the net. And if he play, if he stays healthy and gives it to you, he's not only a guy that can do that for you. He's doing it on the cheap. Yeah, like it's the best yeah. of both worlds. And you know, a lot of these guys, they are drafted, they're developed, they come through the system. But you know, if you're if you're not going to do that, then it feels like it's Allmark, Markstrom, Soros. Like those are three veteran guys who we think will be available. Yeah, like that's probably what you're talking about, yeah. Johnny. You got to try to yeah. find one of those three guys. You do, but like, like are you gonna trade? Like, what are you trading for Markstrom for a year? What are you trading for Soros? I mean, you have to extend them as well. But like, it's just those are trades that are hard to, hard to make. And mm-hmm. you know, like Jake Ottinger, is no doubt a stud goalie. He wasn't that great this year. He didn't have a great year, right? right. Like Shosturkin yeah. was not as good as Jonathan Quick the first 25 games of the season. It, goalies are hard. Even the best goalies are hard to figure. I just. You know, if you're trying to put together the net best team you can with the money available and the assets available, like, of course, I'd rather have Markstrom. Of course, I'd rather have Soros or or even Olmark. I don't even know if Olmark would wave to come to Toronto, but I I just don't know. Like, what am I going to have to give him, what, Easton Cowan and Timmy Lilgren in the first? Like, how much am I going to have to give to get him? And then how much worse are we going to be now and into the future? That's the challenge because they've painted themselves into the corner with the way they put their roster together already, that they kind of, they don't have the flexibility maybe to do that right now. Maybe next year, like maybe Mm -hmm. next summer, they would be more able to take on something like that. Yeah. I I think next year, I think it's going to take a year. Like I I think next year is a year where you might kind of sit back and you're going to allocate your money in a certain way, but I, I wouldn't panic. I wouldn't make panic moves. I wouldn't overpay you. It might take you a year to clear your books uh, accumulate some assets, allow some young players to grow. And Leaf fans aren't going to want to hear that, but it may be a transition season. It may be a year where Barubi gets a year to see what he's got. They figure out who they like, who can step up. And then, you know, in the, because in the next 12 months, they're going to have a ton of space, a mm-hmm. ton of space. And yeah. then you also, if you get away from making a bunch of trades, like, I, I don't know, I'm not going to predict what's going to happen in the trade deadline. I, I can't picture a scenario where there's sellers, but anything's possible. But it may just be a sit back and breathe, make smart, astute moves, and next summer pounce. And but even even if they do that, Hayes, it's not like, provided they have like moderate good health. Mm-hmm. It's not like they won't be good again next year. Like it's not like I would be surprised if they you know they're going to make the playoffs next year, even if they just ran it back as is. Yeah. New coach, same group. I mean they've been a good team. What were they this year? They ninth in the league, tenth in the league overall. Like they'll do that again. Um, now it may not be a you know a feel like a Stanley Cup contending team, which is different than being the tenth best team. And maybe they do have to wait one more year before they can kind of make those other kind of moves. But um, it will be interesting. It will be interesting. I will say this, guys. John Tavares over here has been awesome. Like he has played so well, like better than I remember him playing almost at any point this year for the Leafs. He's been dynamite. So. Um, I, I, I don't know if John, if they asked him, would be interested in, in facilitating a trade. I, I, I could see him saying, no, I, I got the no move. I'll play out the year. You yep. don't have to resign me. It's all good. We'll see how it goes, and then we'll see what happens next summer. Like He would be willing to play it out. Mitch, maybe not so much. Yeah, feels that way. Feels like yeah. Marner, Marner's the, the – that's going to be spicier, uh, potentially, yeah. on both ends. All right, Johnny. Enjoy yourself over there. Go catch a movie or something, buddy, and just relax. And... <laughs> All right, boys. Listen, before I go, positive Tuesday today, okay? I met a guy over here, a guy mm-hmm. named Jan Eichler. He's a, he's a journalist over here. He told me to tell you specifically that he listens to you guys literally every day on the podcast over here, whenever he downloads it after you guys have done it. He said it was your show and you three stooges that helped him get through COVID every day when he had nothing else to do, so... He wanted to say, tell me to tell you, thank you for what you guys do to help people get through yes. the tough days. So, I love right, it. There Donka. you go. Donka. Well, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. We're not in Germany, all right? Okay. Hey, but that's okay. I thought you said it was a German. What, did you say it was a German journalist, or no, did I just a, hear that? You just made it up. He's a journalist. I don't think he's oh, okay. German, but I, I'll <laughs> German I'll journalist. Donka, Mr. <laughs> International. I am. I know Donka. that word. It's yes. the only German word I know. I thought you said German. Anyway, disregard uh, that. Cancel yeah. that 
delete that out of the podcast, too. Yeah, get that out of the podcast. But shout he out. Wanted, we he was very that. sincere. He was very, very sincere about it, so I wanted to relay the message. Awesome. Well, All right. Thank you very much. Make sure you say thank you for us, and we'll just keep doing what we do, Johnny. That's what we're going to keep doing, buddy. All right, boys. We'll talk to you in a couple of days. All right. Talk soon. There's Mike Johnson, our TSN hockey analyst. How about that? Going international. That's great. Love it. Donka. That's great. It's Donka. Donka. Oh, I'm going to make fun of that guy's name, too. No, I thought he said German. I thought he said there was a German journalist over here covering the worlds. I don't know where I got that from, but um, anyway, that's cool. Yeah, you can find everything podcasted, right? You can find it on uh, the iHeart radio app. You can find it everywhere you might find a podcast, wherever you want to download it. I just got a note from Crapper. He's not coming on. He said, I wish I could, bro. I've got a dinner tonight. He said, let's get those boys out to Weston, and then we'll see who's laughing. I appreciate the invite. Okay. Ah, that right. guy will beat you by 30. Like he'll Well, I got to get strokes. I mean, ah, if okay. he's a plus four. There's the upcoming match. Hayes versus Crapper. Love it. I can't Dude. wait for that. Yeah. I'll, I can't wait for that. Yeah. We'll get the champ out there. Okay. And we'll see what you do against right. the champ. I mean, Crapper. it's at ho- his, his home course. Dude, it doesn't which is matter. Huge... I want, yeah, he'll give you as many shots as you need. Well, Crapper I just I just want the appropriate you. amount of strikes, the okay. strokes, whatever the Gulf Canada app says, Crapper is, uh, whatever I am. Yeah, let's do it, man. <laughs> okay, let's do it. I can't let's wait. Party. Right, let's party. Well, we still owe him an apology. We'll get Doogie yeah. out there in a cart with a video. Okay, and Hayes we'll just get some Crapper. Hayes versus Crapper, the grudge match. Okay, love it. I love it, man. Down and dirty, down yeah. and dirty. Yeah. Okay, brought to you by. Dude wipes. We got to work on that. See if you can <laughs> possibly wipes. get a sponsor. Doogie, get a sponsor for the grudge match. Hayes versus Crapper. Dude okay. wipes <laughs> something. Yeah. Dude wipes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll uh, revisit our conversation with Craig Baruba. We got our best bets brought to you by FanDuel later in the hour. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 2. All right, best bet still to come on Celtics Pacers tonight. Pacers, big, big underdogs in Boston. Jays, White Sox tonight. We'll continue to touch on what Ross Atkins had to say over the weekend. Not much. Excited and encouraged. We're excited and we're encouraged. And listen, they've won two straight. So, you know, maybe they're moving in the right direction. Playing the White Sox, always helpful. But, um, yeah, more on the Jays later this afternoon and certainly throughout the week. But... Had the chance to catch up with the uh, new head coach of the Maple Leafs, Craig Berube, who was a former Leaf. He was involved in the famous Doug Gilmore trade. He was yeah. going the other way to Calgary for the uh, Doug yeah, Gilmore trade, which is amazing. I mean, that he was a part of history, you know, Leaf history. That's probably the most famous Leaf trade of all time. Certainly one of the three or four. And uh, we had the chance to catch up with him. And it's been a whirlwind, I'm sure, the last, you know, 24, 48 hours, if not more than that. And Began by asking Craig, is it all sunk in yet that you're the head coach of the Leafs? It's excited to be here. Uh, you know, it's a first class organization. I've been here for a couple of days and, um, you know, really looking forward to uh, getting going here down the road. But uh, like I said, you know, just excited and uh, great people, working with great people here. And um, obviously can't wait to work with the team. Greg, how secretive were, like, it seems like every time there's a coach hired, there's, like, videos of them at the airport. Like, how buttoned down was this? Did you have to get to Toronto on the down low, or how secretive was the whole process? Uh, not really any. I mean, I, you know, jumped on a flight and cruised in here with my tracksuit on and then <laughs> rolled into a car and got to the hotel. <laughs> Okay. Okay. That's, that's pretty that's good. That's what I want to hear, man. <laughs> yeah, that is good because yeah, it does. It does seem to. There's always like up here in Toronto, people are tracking flights. There's some wild stuff going on. Maybe that's actually the answer. Just jump on a regular plane and get in a car and drive With downtown. A track suit. Yeah, and people will will ultimately leave you alone. And um, you know, you obviously you you've you you were a hot commodity, so to speak. Uh, it's our understanding. You you interviewed with other teams. Was is Toronto job always the one that, that you had your eye on and the one you wanted? Well, like I said, you know, you, you don't know what you're going to get. You know, there, obviously there's jobs out there. Yeah, it'd be a great job, and this is obviously one of them. Um, I mean, I, again, to work uh, for Toronto Maple Leafs, you know, just the history, the original six, and, and uh, working in, uh, you know, up in, in Canada in this environment is very appealing and like I said, you know, I, I really believe that uh, 
talking with Brad and Brendan Shanahan, and we're all on the same page on, on what we believe in. And, and then I look at the roster, and I'm like, it's a very good hockey team. So um, I'm excited. Uh, I'm ready to get going. So have you had extensive conversations with Tree as far as how the roster is going to be constructed? I mean, a lot of times you, the coach and the manager work together as far as some of the things that you do like uh, on your teams. Is that something that you've had uh, those conversations with Tree about? Well, about a ton. You know, uh, we're kind of just taking it step by step here, guys. I, you know, it's kind of like two days on of the job here. So a lot of stuff we're, we are taking care of and, we're working towards that, so but we're definitely going to have conversations here coming up about it. With Craig Barube, uh, the new head coach of the Maple Leafs, and you know we were referencing your your press conference today, and you know you spoke about your relationship with with the players, and you know the word accountability comes up all the time, and it's just natural. Every new coach gets it in every sport. But in terms of what you're going to ask of your players, can you detail that for us? Like, what's what's the day one conversation, Craig Berube, to his players? This is what I'm looking for, and, and this is what I expect the players to bring to the table. Yeah, and I talked about it today. You know, it's it's team first here. Um, what's the most important thing is the team and what's best for the team. You know, uh, obviously we expect our players to – to do their job. Uh, really, it's like, what's your job? Do your job. I, that's what we expect. And you got to make sacrifices for the team. That's, that's obviously very important because, you know, if you want to be a, ter- a team first mind, uh, mindset, you know, you got to make sacrifices at times. Um, but again, you know, I, I, like I talked about today, you know, everybody's important. Mm-hmm. Everybody's going to have a role on a team and everybody's going to be used. Well, you used the term partnership, and, and you just detailed your side of the partnership. I'm curious, you know, if you have examples in the past or expectations in the future of how that partnership can go the other way to, in order to, to maybe keep you accountable, to, to challenge you in certain ways. Is that, is that how you define a partnership, a two-way ship, a two-way street, yeah. so to speak? But, like, my door's open to all the players, and they're going to know that. Um, and I've had players in the past come in and talk to me about uh, situations, things that could be, could be numerous things. You know, I'm not going to bring them up. Um, but, you know, like I said, uh, you know, we work together. And that's, that's really, in my opinion, that's how it, it works best. Um, you know, as a coach, I want to be challenged. And my players have things to challenge me about, then they should. Craig, when you talk about relationships, uh, you mentioned you're only a couple of days on the job, so you're probably going to have to take a breath and, and just kind of settle in. But, you know, are you a, the type of coach that will get on a plane and go visit some of your top players and just kind of try and foster that relationship maybe out, away from the rink so that you can settle in and get to know them personally before you have to work with them? Yeah, that's, you know, that's definitely a good question. It's something that, you know, I want to do, so I want to try to – you know, arrange some time to go see some players and, uh, you know, meet with them and talk to them. I met some guys here today, which is great. So, but I, uh, I always like, in, you know, in-person conversations and face-to-face conversations. Um, like I said, I reached out to a lot of these guys on the phone already and through text and things like that. But, you know, we'll uh, down the road, you want to get together. Chief, you mentioned north-south today, and this team has been a possession team for a number of years here. So uh, how does that change? I know every coach, regardless of what your philosophy in hockey is, wants to get the puck, wants to keep the puck. But just north-south, is that just more of a direct route to the puck and keep it once you get it? Well, 100%. I Like, when I talk north-south, you know, it's – I talk about predictable hockey. It's starting in your own zone on breakouts where people are in position. You have outs, you make the play. Let's go north of it. Area plays. Listen, you know, in St. Louis there, we're one of the highest puck possession teams in the league. Um, we're a great four checking team. Um, and you have, you know, you have to possess the puck in different ways. You can't, it, it can't all be off the rush. You know, if you watch the playoffs here and, you know, how tight it is, there's no room. You got to put pucks deep and you got to go get them. And you go four check and you get the puck back, that's puck possession. With Craig Barube, the new head coach of the uh, Toronto 
Maple Leafs. So, you know, this this team's history in the playoffs, well documented. We had you on during the playoffs to, to chat about it. Um, how do you approach the history of the players who are going to stick around? There's always change, but the players that's, that, that are sticking around, that are going to be here, that have been here for quite some time, that have the playoff history that they have, how do you how do you approach that that topic and and I guess prepare for the next time you're in the playoffs? Yeah, I don't think we want to look back on that. You know, to be honest with you, that was in the past. I wasn't here. You know, I'm I'm gonna you know my players. I want them to focus on the process of getting there, um, and that starts in the summertime, obviously through camp, and then we get going in the regular season. They're gonna hear a lot lot from me about the process. And just staying with the process and focusing on that. And, you know, playoffs come around, then we'll deal with playoffs. But, you know, it's 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 a long year, guys. There's a lot of work to put in. And, um, you know, we want to, I'll say it again, just focus on the process. So, Craig, you, you you know, St. Louis, you had success. You came in there. Obviously, you won. And, you know, I played there. Uh, you know, it's a different animal than coaching in, in Toronto, you know, have you prepared yourself or have you at least thought about and had conversations about how big of an adjustment it will be for you personally as far as talking every day? I mean, I I can't imagine what the responsibilities were in Toronto with the, the scribes there, but it's, it's a lot different here. You're going to be front and center, a lot of people asking you questions daily, sometimes two and three times you're getting interviewed. Is, is that something that you've thought about? Oh, definitely. That's, you know, like I know, it's a huge market. Um, you know, it's a huge media market. Um, and, you know, I knew that coming in here. And so, again, that's part of the job. And um, that's part of my job. So it's just another thing that I got to, I got to, you know, work and do. So I don't, I don't think there's any preparation, to be honest with you. Um, again, it's just me doing my job. With Craig Barube, in terms of your staff, Craig, like, do you start immediately trying to fill that out? What's the plan? Yeah, you know, Brad and I are going to sit down and we're going to talk about all this stuff going forward here. So it's definitely uh, high on the list. Uh, we got to get that situated and, um, you know, get the right people in here. Um, you know, whether it's people that are we're here already, we're not sure. We got a, a process that we got to go through and, um, you know, make sure we get it right. Craig, the game's changed a lot, but you mentioned, uh, you know, accountability, some toughness. Are you seeing some some of the things happening in the playoffs? Uh, how is that balance? Or how are you going to talk to your team about the balance as far as competing? But you do have some guys that aren't shy to drop the gloves or at least will will be, you know, not shy to mix it up in scrums. Is, is, do you feel there's a fine line? Obviously, it's not when, when we played where – you know, eight, ten guys were dropping the gloves, but it, the game has changed, but you still uh, really expect them to compete nightly. Well, 100%. Competing and, you know, playing hard is a must. Um, that's a non-negotiable. Um, you know, toughness is not the fighting side of things. Toughness is, you know, puck battles and taking hits to make plays and putting yourself blocking shots, all that types of stuff. Yeah, sometimes guys drop the gloves, but that's part of the game still. We all know that. It's not as much anymore, but, you know, I want my team to be, you know, tough in those other areas. Um, And then also, you know, mental toughness and things like that. Those are all important things that, uh, you know, good teams have all those things. So that's what we want to get to. But Craig Barube, have you ever had a press conference where there's another guy up there that you work with that you fought multiple times in your career, like today with Shanahan? <laughs> no, I think that might have been the first one. I'm not sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that must have been gratifying hearing him say, maybe I shouldn't have taken that challenge on. But, man, the two of you, you guys had a bunch of battles, didn't you, throughout your career? Yeah, it was, you know, the devils and us back in the day with the Flyers, there was a lot of battles. Uh, <laughs> you, know, there's, you know, both teams. Teams were both teams were physical and tough, um, and Shanny, yeah. So, um, listen, boys, I would change uh, places with many times to score as many goals as he scored. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, he he did it all. That's for sure. Uh, well, welcome aboard officially. You know, we've we've obviously had you on a bunch in the past. We look forward to having you on more in the future. And uh, good luck settling in back in Toronto. As you said today, you were here for a brief time back in the early nineties and. 
Uh, we're looking forward to seeing what you do with the job. So uh, thank you for joining us today, Craig. You got it, guys. Thanks for having me on. There he is, Craig Baruba, the new head coach of the Maple Leafs. Um, yeah, that viral fight of Shanahan and Barube. It's everywhere. Just bedlam, man. Just bedlam. No defense. Just going at it. Yeah. Toe to toe. Crazy right? fights. Like that's the that's the thing. There was like there were guys that obviously fought defensively and strategically, but there were also guys in the eighties that just threw bombs. That's Animals. it. Yeah. yeah. No seatbelt, just bombs. Just bombs. <laughs> like Wendell was one of them. Like there was that great Wendell Clark Rick Tockett fight at the gardens back in the day yeah. where Wendell hits someone. I think it was Mark Howe and Tockett just came in flying and they just were throwing bombs. Grid- oh, just <laughs> bombs. And just no, the, who was it that Stumpy Thomas fought? Is that Tux he fought? Maybe it was Tucker and, Stumpy. Well, they get and I mean, it both was, of those guys. Stumpy was tough, man. He was yeah. like a he was like a middleweight that could absolutely throw jackhammers. I think it was. I've Stumpy seen and some Tucker. Stumpy fights like up close and personal, where I thought Stump was just like this speedy winger with the wrist shot. He would kick some people's ass. Oh yeah, man. yeah. I yeah. think it was. I think Stumpy was with the Leafs, and I think Darcy was was in Tampa. Pretty yeah. sure. I think it was a Rock'em Sock'em, like, fight of the year kind of thing. Wow. Although, Cherry, used, he used, he'd have a heavyweight fight as the fight. He'd always call it, like, the, what would he call it? Like, the undercard or something. It's like, just oh, to get yeah. us warmed up, here's the, you know, don't don't look past these guys. They can really throw them. And it was, like, Stumpy and Tux just throwing those, bombs. Those like, Rock'em Sock'em videos. Like, I used to get them for Christmas all the time. They were the best. Unbelievable. The it was mandatory. You had to get <laughs> Rock'em Sock'em. You had to. VHS. Just yes. Rock'em Sock'em. So good, volume man. 22. And yeah. it would just be like, guys, <laughs> it was just the greatest. going at it. Always the cheesy music. And, oh, yeah. You know, you'd have different themes every year and different outfits. And, yeah. you know, there'd be segments of goals, hits, yeah. stops, he, bloopers. Scotty Martin just comment. wrote me and said it was Tucker and Stumpy at Maple Leaf Gardens. Yeah. Just Throwing, Dude, wow. you got to see it. Like, and now they're like really close. Like, as you know, like they're like really oh, good yeah. buddies. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just a tilt. We got to find. Love maybe it. we can find that and play it. And we'll just talk over it. We'll see. I don't. Yeah, I don't see why not. See if you can find that, Doogie. It's awesome. it's a great great tilt. All right, we'll yeah. come back with our best bets. Brought to you by FanDuel Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN two. All right, today's Best Bets powered by FanDuel. Make your picks and assemble the same game parlay in seconds on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. I'm going to take the points tonight. Everyone's been betting against the Pacers, saying they can't do it. I think the Celtics are going to win the series. I think Boston sets up really well to win the NBA championship, but I'm getting 10 and a half. I'll take the points. It's a conference final. Indy's coming off a big win, game seven at the Garden. I don't think don't they'll think be overwhelmed. They get smoked, no, dude? I, I, I no. think Boston's the better team. And Boston may win tonight, but I, I think Indy shows up and, and gives them a fight. And I, all I need them to do is keep it within 10. Like, it's a conference final game. I'm getting 10 and a half. I'll take the points. Yeah, take them. I'm taking them. Today's best bets powered by FanDuel. The sweat begins at tip-off by betting your favorite NBA star to score the first basket or go for 30-plus points in a same-game parlay. Please play responsibly. Must be 19-plus physically located in Ontario. You guys want to finish this off with Tox versus Stumpy. Yes. Let's watch this. Though. Yeah, because so, Scotty wait. McKay said possibly the best middleweight he's ever seen. Tilt. Oh, unreal. I was at the Gardens, and it was it was obviously Stumpy was was a leaf. There's Dallas Akins was a leaf, and and Tucker was with Tampa. Look at these two just throwing bombs, <laughs> like just no defense because they're both about the same size, yeah. right? Like they're not. They're middleweights, I'd say. And once it gets going, this is probably the one. I don't know if Pat Quinn uh, it was more than that. That didn't. That wasn't the whole fight. But Yeah, they must have gone another time. Yeah, too, there was, more, there was way more than that. It was wild, the fight that these two had. Like, it was crazy. Yeah, that might have been the start of them, the least being like, we got to get this guy up here. Yeah. We might need to find a and way to get those two him. sat in a golf cart for five years straight after that and just played <laughs> golf and were best friends. <laughs> it's so funny. It was like Shannon and Barube today. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like they're both like, yeah, I remember that fight pretty well. We I had a hundred, a couple hundred fights. Craig had over two hundred. Anyway, he's our new coach, and I'm the president. This is great. So weird. It's just Love it's it, such a different sport. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we got uh, Jay's in action tonight. There's a lot of rumors out there. Mark Feinstein had an interesting report on what it would cost to get Vladdy or Bo, and would the Jays be willing to look into it? We'll get into that extensively tomorrow. We'll be teeing up the conference finals in the NHL and the Stanley Cup playoffs. So we're looking forward to that. A lot going on this week. Good to be back. It was a long weekend. Good to be back. Good to uh, see everyone behind the scenes. Thank you for helping out. As always, we appreciate it. Everyone for tuning in today. TV, radio, podcast, web. We appreciate that. We're out of here. Enjoy your evenings. Enjoy the games tonight. We're back tomorrow at... Hayes v. Crapper, the grudge match. Coming soon. 4 p.m. Love it. We'll chat then.